here today. Uh, I've been uh, kind of having a conversation with with uh, someone that uh, I feel is looking for truth. Uh, I think the motive is to convert me back to UPC, <laughs> or uh, feel like that I have fallen away in some some sense of the word. Uh, but anyhow, I, I feel like I want to share this with with y'all. Um, who it is does not matter, and uh, I just rather keep that private. But uh, I feel that just with what I felt in the Holy Ghost. Uh, in response um, to a video I was sent um, that it's expedient for both information and admonition to share this with you today and uh, you know just one of the, I've told you before if you've listened to my videos that um, one of the main things that <laughs> Um, the, the UPC, these folks, uh, when you're teaching a Bible study or whatever, they want you to drive home that every word is the Word of God. Um, and I will tell you that, that right there should, should bring you pause. If you've done any study, and the Bible says study to show yourself, and I know this was Paul talking, um, and, and I, I don't believe everything that was written, whether it was written by Paul for real, or if it was, it was uh, tainted. Uh, but either way, that's why the Holy Ghost exists. That's why Jesus said the Holy Ghost will lead and guide you into all truth. And uh, you will know them by their fruits, by, the, by their actions. Um, and so when we look at that, so whether, whether, whether I'm not disputing everything in the New Testament, I'm telling you, you have to know how to read it. And not everything that um, um, was said is, is, is erroneously put. I believe that the Bible is interwoven. Um, and, and the only way you're going to get to heaven is by Jesus. And you're not going to get to heaven by Peter. You're not going to get to heaven by Paul or anyone else. He did not leave this thing to man. He left it to his own spirit that he said, I will send, but I must leave first. He's told the, the, his, his disciples that I am with you, but I will be in you. So that is why it's so important that you must receive his spirit to lead and guide you into truth. And, uh, I, 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 this thing could, I could, I could talk for hours. I could go off on tangents, but, but I, I'm, I'm just going to try to stick to the conversation and what I feel that the Holy Ghost led me to say and, and, and brought to my mind, um, in, in this conversation. I was sent a video of, of, uh, the authority of, of God's word and things like that. And, and, and you see, they try to establish a, a rule. They try to put put something in a box, right? They, they try to say, here is the boundaries. This is what we have to stay in. So that in itself is man-made box. Um, faith is what we have to have in God. And the Spirit will confirm the words of Jesus. So anyhow, I just want to give my response um, I thank the person for that video, um, and here, here as I go, I'm going to read the response, and I hope that uh, the Holy Ghost will move on you, that you will understand and, 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 and have a deeper appreciation for what we do have in those 66 books, mainly the New Testament. The Old Testament is to bring us to Christ, so if you're already to Christ, n none of that is going to matter other than knowledge of the way God moved with man and, and worked with his children of Israel. So the only thing that we are to abide by is the words of Jesus because that is the only thing we will be judged by. Um, so anyhow, uh, I thank the person for, for 
you know, sending me and caring enough to take out their time to, to speak to me. Uh, but the 66 books of writings compiled into the, what we know is to be the Bible, uh, I believe, is for our consumption, right? And only the New Testament Gospels qualifies as our understanding of Jesus or God in the face of Jesus for salvation to the Gentiles. Uh, the poor will be given the Gospel as well. There are 35,000 plus versions of religion today uh, for a reason. <laughs> because there are interpretations uh, that people go by. Uh, many are called, but few are chosen. Only they who worship or serve the Father in spirit and in truth. And that's scripture. Jesus said that. Here is the major problem. Man is fallible. And God in no way trusted man. Okay? Or we would have another Moses. We would have another leader that Jesus appointed. That did not happen. Jesus moved, shifted everything to the authority of the Holy Ghost. His spirit that he said, if I don't go away, the spirit of truth will not come. And he told his disciples that I am with you, but I will be in you. So he had to complete the process of taking sins to the cross for forgiveness. We had to start there that we might be brought back or reconciled back to God through Jesus Christ, the face of Jesus. Okay? So, um, reading the information of the Bible is a whole different story, okay? Um, you must be led or driven by the Holy Ghost. And when I say driven, I'm not talking about as a taskmaster, I'm talking about your desire, okay? Driven by desire to, to be right with God. And when you look at that, the emphasis was placed on the Holy Ghost, okay? Jesus placed the emphasis on the Holy Ghost and is irrefutable and the negativity that he placed on the description of man is irrefutable. The deception of man is irrefutable by what Jesus put forth, by his own words. When the, when the apostle said, what will the signs of the end times be? And he said, take heed, be smart, be aware, or don't allow any man to deceive you. What did he go with? Did he say, oh, what's the devil? The devil is the roaring lion and blah, blah, blah. No, he said, man, man will deceive you. The book of Acts is misread and whether on purpose, by deception or ignorance is mistaught and misunderstood. Either way, those will be held accountable. Many, that, that, that's, that's what's going to happen. He said, once ignorance was, was, was winked at by God. But now commandeth he men everywhere to repent from their sin and their deception. Right? So, either way, they'll be held accountable. Many letters of Paul go directly against what Jesus taught. That's irrefutable as well. Um, which, which tells me we're only being informed for our own good, admonition, and understanding. I know that's that's a sacred cow. We we can't say Paul was wrong in any way. You know, I, I, I personally believe that when Peter said that Paul speaks of things hard to be understood, maybe that understood equates to kind of not believable. You ever thought of that? No, it's not preached that way. It, you're 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 never allowed to to go against the belief or the grain of the faith of that organization. That is a, a sacred cow. You don't touch it. No, no, you, you would become a apostate right off the bat. But, you know, we should encourage people to dig deep into the Word of God, to understand its origins, and to seek God. That's what Jesus left this truth to, that the Holy Ghost, His Spirit, the whole wall, the middle wall partition, was tore in half 
It was tore away so we have, have access to God, not through man, not through a priest. And somehow we have been sucking down garbage to not believe that. They have, they have continually taught that you must have a pastor. Oh, you know what? If you don't believe in a pastor and you don't submit and yourself to a pastor, then you're just too rebellious and, and you just have a spirit of, of, of rebellion and, and you're not wanting God at all. You're just too proud. There must be a nasty spirit within you. Shame on you people. Shame on that thought. That thought is from hell. Jesus said, seek me. Those who seek me in spirit and in truth, I will be found. And, and there are so many scriptures that, that I could just go, 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 go to validate. Um, so here we are. Let's get back to this. Just, just like... So, which tells me they're only being informed for our own good admonition and understanding, just like the old law of Moses is for us to follow, but to lead us to Christ, not Paul, not Peter, not some religion or religious ideal. And, and, and the Old Testament was to lead us to Christ. Uh, you know, it was said, well, you know, God invested in these men and they, they became God. They didn't become God. That's what you're saying to me. That's why he showed you fallibility in man. That's why even the ones he chose, Peter, three times denied Christ. The one that he said would give the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And that was, that was instantaneous. That was momentarily. That was brought on by the Holy Ghost. That was momentarily in time as this was preached. And this was the, the access to the gates of heaven. That's indisputable. That's what Jesus told Peter. But many of you want to teach that, that Peter from then on had full authority. God never did that. God never gave Peter that full authority, uh, except at that moment when he was overtaken willfully by Peter's consent to the Holy Ghost to preach that message of, of repentance and baptism in Jesus' name. So, so I want you to understand those things. If you don't understand the book of Acts, if you don't read it the way that, you know, we was always taught in UPC, oh, you were the, the actions of the apostles, so we must do exactly what they said. Well, when you get to chapter 15, and I'm not saying that's the only chapter, but when you get to chapter 15 and you read it in full, you will find out that those of the sect of the Pharisees, were the ones standing up saying, oh, you must be circumcised and you must obey the law of Moses. They weren't willing to let go of that tradition of man that Jesus railed against. They were not wanting to let go of that rule of man that you will find in Matthew 23 that Jesus called them hypocrites. Jesus called them hypocrites because they didn't even do it themselves. But you will find in Acts 15 that Peter said, we nor our fathers were able to even do the law. Why would we push it on these other, the Gentiles who received the Holy Ghost the same as we did? The full power, the full scope of the Holy Ghost God gave to them. God is not a respecter of persons. God is not dividing his spirit in quantity or division in gifts. Jesus never spoke of that, but Paul did. That's why I see errors in the scripture that we are not to follow, but to understand for information purposes. So Acts 15 would be that perfect example of what I'm bringing forth today and what I've been preaching and teaching. Okay, so Paul was a Pharisee. He was brought up in that way by his father, uh, and he too was a Pharisee. If you want to understand Jesus' thoughts on them, read Matthew 23. Um, and, and all through the, the pages of, of, of Jesus' writings uh, when he got on that subject. Uh, when Jesus struck Paul down to convert him, many say, oh, well, Paul was, was to the Gentiles. Well, you cannot show me that scripturally that, that he was given. Paul self-proclaims that he's an apostle to the Gentiles. But if you read the scripture, you will see that, that, that when Jesus struck Paul down to convert him, Jesus gave him no special mission that he did for every one of us. The chosen vessel statement, he said he was a chosen vessel, is twofold. One, you have to keep it in context. The context was that everyone was afraid of Paul. He was murdering 
the, the, the apostles, the, the Christians. It, they feared Saul at the time and later converted, it changed his name to Paul. And Jesus assured them it was no trick. That's why the vision came. Uh, he was chosen just like them and us to do the work for God. If you believe that Jesus' words are what they are to be judged by, and why would you? Because Jesus said clearly, let God be true and let every man be a liar. You send me, this, this person sent me the audio of man under, man's understanding, and that's where people fail. They're listening to man. And I'm only speaking today. I'm only telling you to seek Jesus. You do not have to go through a priest or a pastor. That is not Jesus' new covenant. That is the old law. And if you're exercising the old law, to me you are spitting and you are frustrating the grace of God that he brought to free you. You are still a slave to man and the law, and the law will bring forth death. The letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life, and that's through Jesus, the Holy Ghost. And so if, if you believe that, and that you're going to be judged by the words of Jesus, and that's what he said. And so, don't listen to man. And you say, well, you're speaking. Yes, I am speaking, but I'm asking you, I'm, I'm, I'm admonishing you to not listen to me. I'm saying go to the scripture. Go seek God with a pure heart fervently, and you will find him. He will be real to you. He will speak to you. He will show you. He will bring it to pass. He will speak through other people to confirm. And, and, and this may be confirming to some of you right now. I don't know. God chooses and uses his vessels as he wishes. And be happy if you're part of that. Be a vessel of to honor. So there is clear scripture and, and, and pure scripture, uh, clear of disputation in, in their own right. You, you the, see, some scriptures are, are just not, oh, well, they could be this or it could be that. No. Jesus said that, that you're not going to be as the Gentiles. You're not going to be as they do. Uh, when, when, and I don't want to go through these, but I'm telling you, Matthew uh, 20, 25, 26. Luke 22, 25, 26. Look at Mark, uh, I believe it's in 17. You look at those. Those are three identical topics that Jesus spoke of to his apostles and said, we're not going to have one above the other. But yet, you go to a church that has exactly that, the very thing that Paul teaches, oh, honor them, oh, that, that have the rule over you. Jesus never spoke of anyone having a rule. James and John, oh, please set one on your left and on your right. He said, this is not going to be so among you. You believe man or you believe God. You believe the word of God through what Jesus said and confirmed by the Holy Ghost, or you're going to be lost. It's simple as that. The traditions of man. So, you know, when the Holy Ghost backs something up through the word of Jesus, which is what we will be judged by, Jesus left authority only to one, and it was never man. Man was not that one. It was his spirit who was and is to lead and guide us. Okay? So, first of all, I want you to know that I am not disputing many things, even in the letters that Paul wrote. There's, there's a lot of things that, that are good I use, I will quote, um, because I know they jive with what Jesus said. I know by the spirit that gives me comfort and, 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 and peace in those things that shows me exactly that this is what Jesus wants. And if you're not listening to that, if you're not being moved and, 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 and taught by the Holy Ghost, through the Word, He will show you what is information purposes, what is uh, um, jiving with what Jesus said. You will know that, you will feel that, if your heart is right and you are seeking God and you have His Spirit and you don't place man above God. 
So in no way do I dispute. Um, so the Holy Ghost prompts us to know what's right by what Jesus said. For instance, let me show you. Uh, Paul says the Spirit of God can be divided into special packages like healings, tongues, spiritual gifts. Um, that's totally against the oneness Jesus taught. Let's, 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 let's look back and let's say, okay, well, where was an instance that Jesus could have brought this out and confirmed what Paul said? Or Paul would be confirmed to what Jesus said, really. But yeah, religion is the other way around. But what you see there, when, when, the, when the disciple said, well, Lord, we can't cast out these demons. And what did Jesus say? Well, you've got to seek after the gift of healing. You have to seek after another portion of the Holy Ghost. No, Jesus did not say that. That does not jive with what Jesus said. Jesus said some things can only come out or be done through prayer and fasting. Did Jesus, at the moment, did he say there was a division of his spirit? No. He said more dedication. That is exactly what Jesus taught. And it is not what Paul is teaching. And that flags me to say that that's not right. I will not accept that. You should not accept that. Man's ways. Okay? So back to that, that authority, to that division some things are not right. And if it can't be backed up by Jesus, not only by what he said, but by the spirit which he said it, you have to understand that. And people like to bring in the tithes thing, and I will not get on that because I do not have the time to do so right now. I want to get through this, but... So let me find where I was. So, uh... so anyhow, this comes from man... This is only one spirit Jesus ever spoke of. Never do we find where Jesus said any more than extra dedication, such as prayer and fasting. That was for you to focus more on what you were asking, not seeking for another gifting. Opposed to this scripture, which is in harmony of what Jesus taught. These things have I written unto you. Now here's a scripture by, by John that does follow right fall right into the teaching of Jesus. So we know it's to be true. He said, These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. What is seducing? Oh look, here's a carrot. Hell, oh, here's this is this is of Jesus. Look, yea, there's Jesus there. To go over here. Jesus said not to. But the anointing, and this is John, first John 2. 26 and 27. 27 says, But the anointing, don't be dis seduced. Don't be deceived by these people. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man should teach you. That any man teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. So there, there's, there's, a, there's a very vivid two areas that you can compare. One falls in line with what Jesus said. And, and, and the Spirit will, will tag you to say this is good. And, and if you look at the other one, you say, yeah. And, and you know, for always, they, they say, you know, Peter said that Paul spoke of things which are hard to be understood. I'm not so sure that interpretation, if it's if, if it's there, um, was talking about that, 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 hey, we just must believe it because we don't understand it. I'm not buying that. Maybe Peter said, and I'm not trying to throw doubt, cast doubt, but I'm, I'm, I'm being real here. Maybe Peter's like, eh, maybe it's, a lot of stuff he's saying and doing is hard to believe because... I didn't take that from Jesus. So maybe you might want to look at some of that stuff a little different than what is being shoved down your throat by these religious organizations. So this is a very weighty and full admonition by Jesus. So we, we look at Mark 7 and 7. Albeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. 
For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God that ye may keep your own tradition. I, I could just go for another hour just on this. Um, washing of pots and and all these things and other things such like things you do other things there's no reason for an altar in a church Jesus sacrificed a pure clean sacrifice once and for all in vain means they do it for nothing God doesn't impute it as righteousness he doesn't breathe the, the incense of their praise or anything they do do. So one has to wonder the extent of how far that even goes because his eyes are upon the righteous and his ear is open unto their cry. The righteous, those that seek to be right with God. And again, I could go on and on with this whole Pharisaic, Pharisaic thing with with the cups and other such things as you do you know there shouldn't be an altar at a church at all so one that's the the church itself shouldn't even be it should just be called a, a club of, of like believers not the church of Jesus because it's not the church of Jesus those that, that that worship him in spirit and in truth is his body not those that go to a place and, and and I won't I won't belabor the point here. I just wanted to get that out, and I just hope that someone will start seeking Jesus and put aside the traditions of men. I'm not asking you to 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 not believe in God. I'm asking you to believe in Jesus. I'm asking you through the face of Jesus believe in God. Get salvation. Be led by the Holy Ghost. I'm not saying, hey, listen to me. I'm Lonnie and go by my name. I don't care about any of that. I'm not asking you to listen to another thing. I'm asking you. I'm admonishing you to get in the Word. Seek the Holy Ghost. Let God be true. Let every man become a liar. Seek God with a pure heart fervently. He will be found. And you will begin to see when you read the Bible the proper way. You are seeing in the book of Acts the actions. Yes, it is the actions of the apostles. Were they all right? No, they weren't all right. And in 15, if you would just study at chapter 15, you will see, you will see that, that at first if we obeyed what the pharisaical um, uh, disciples said, they would all have to go get circumcised. <laughs> you know what that means. Well, hey, let's stop there. Okay, well, the disciples said it. They were Holy Ghost-filled men of God. They were. They really were. So when you look at that, you, you could say, yeah, let's go do that. Now let's go back and read some more. Oh, look, we found another, another piece of it. Oh, my gosh, we didn't even need to do that. Oh, well, we weren't even able to fulfill the law. Peter said he, he or our, our fathers wasn't able to do it. So you want to you want to bring up and say, oh well, you know these these men of God, the whole the uh, uh, Lord was in them. Yes, He was. But this, the comers would never be there into made perfect. If you read Hebrews, so I just want you to know, seek God. Don't follow the traditions of man and be lost. Thank you for watching and JesusNameMinistries.com or dot org. Um, go there you'll find more of our content seek us out on youtube uh, we have many messages out there um, jesus name ministries look it up and if you have any questions reach out to me i would be more than happy to uh, seek the lord for any answers that you may have but first seek god seek the holy ghost I'm just sharing what the Holy Ghost has revealed to me after many years of an organizational teaching of UPCI. God has opened my eyes and shown me what the scripture really means outside 
the lens and the filter of an organization that wants you to believe a certain way. So God bless you. Go in peace and have a great Saturday day. In Jesus' name, amen.